Right, this question is concerning um, odd and even functions. You'll see here that we have a, a function of x and it's given as x times cos x plus x plus x to the 5. We have to write it down first of all as a sum of an odd function and an even function. And then we've got to find the integral. But let's worry about the odd and even function first of all. Now, first things first, if we expand out the brackets, we get that f of x is equal to x cos x plus x squared plus x to the 5. So what do we have? Which of these is even? Well, I know that x squared is even because it's an even power of x. So I'll just put a little even there. Um, I know that x to the 5 is odd. It's an odd power of x. Um, and uh, cos, if you look at the graph of cos, it's symmetric about the x-axis, so that bit is even, but x is x to 1, so that's odd. So I've got odd times even for that first expression. Now, odd times even gives us an odd result. So that means that if I split this up in odd and even parts, um, x cos x plus x to the 5, that bit will be odd, if I drew a graph of it, and x squared, that will, bit will be even. So that's splitting it up into an odd and even, odd and even parts. Now, where's the benefit of that? Well, the benefit comes because the integral that we're after, it says find the integral of the function between minus 1 and 1. So, if we find the integral between minus 1 and 1 of f of x dx, we can write that as the integral between minus 1 and 1 of x cos x plus x to the 5 dx plus the integral between minus 1 and 1 of x squared dx. So, I've split the thing up in the integral of the odd function and the integral of the even function. Now, from the theory, if I integrate an odd function between minus t and plus t, or minus x and plus x, or in this case minus 1 and plus 1, so over a symmetric region, an odd function will become 0. So that whole integral becomes 0. So it's 0 for the first bit, and the second bit, if I integrate an even function between those limits, then that's exactly the same as integrating between 0 and 1 and doubling the integral that I get. Now you can try that because you can integrate x squared and put those limits in if you want, but I'm going to integrate x squared, put 0 and 1 in, and then double the answer. So that will give me 2 times uh, x cubed over 3 between 0 and 1, which is 2 times, if I substitute 1 in there, I'll get a third, minus, if I put 0 in there, I'm going to get 0, so the answer comes out to be 2 thirds. I haven't had to do this really complicated integration, that's the benefit of thinking about odd and even functions.